Many retirees, they fall into the tax traps created by delaying their IRA distributions. Today, I wanna to show you why you may not wanna delay like so many Americans do in the strategies to get control of your taxes in retirement. Keep it right here. Good day, everybody. Chris Herline here of Reap Financial, host of Retire Ready TV on KXAN and host of Wealth Radio every Saturday, 11 a.m. on News Radio KLBJ. If you like our content, please hit the subscribe button down below. We drop new content here every week. Many retirees fall into tax traps created by delaying their IRA distributions. The common sense today is we defer taxes because we don't like paying them, obviously. We like to put money in IRAs because they give us tax deductions. But by doing so, many retirees inadvertently set themselves up to be taxed on much bigger amounts. When you put money in IRAs, you get a tax deduction. And let's say you're putting seven or $8,000 a year in. Well, you do that throughout your working years and you've gotten small tax deductions throughout the years, but then when you go to live on this money, it's gonna be taxed at income and the IRS is in control of how much they're gonna take because years down the road, you and I, we don't know what tax rates will be. So the reason that we see tax traps is because the majority of Americans, maybe many of you, the bulk of your wealth is in IRAs. And what retirees do is they defer and let this money grow. And then when they retire, that's when they go to take it out. The question is, is should you take out IRA dollars early in retirement? Should you spread it out amongst all your retirement? Or should you delay all the way up until maybe age 73 or 75, where you have a required minimum distribution? Everybody's situation is different. But what we see with retirees that have saved two, three, four million dollars and more is that by delaying their IRA distributions all the way till let's say 73 or 75, many of them are faced with a large required minimum distribution. And what happens at age 73 or 75 is you may jump tax brackets because if you were forced to take a 50 or a hundred thousand or a hundred and fifty thousand dollar required distribution, all of that is going to show up on the bottom line of the 1040. You got to be aware of this. And in many cases, once that kicks in, you're forced to take it every single year. And if it doesn't push you up into a higher bracket the first year, it probably will in years down the road. I've talked about this for years as well, how your required distributions can impact not only your tax bracket, but how much you're giving back on Social Security and how much you're paying in Medicare premiums. I also believe that Social Security may be means tested down the road more so than it already is. And potentially they will decrease your Social Security benefit based on what your income is in a given year. They're already doing this for Medicare, right? The more you make, the higher the premiums you pay for the same thing. And so controlling your IRA distributions is proactively giving you control down the road. Now, another thing to consider is that your required distribution is all based on how much pre-tax money you have. Not you and your spouse, but you. So if you've got 100,000 in an IRA and a million dollars in a 401k, all of that $1.1 million, they, they aggregate that and then your first year's RMD is gonna be based on how much money was in the account the previous year's close. And the first year's RMD starts at about 3.65% of whatever that aggregate balance is. That's the amount you gotta take out. And then it goes up every year based on your life expectancy tables. So I'm not gonna get into that too far, but here's my point. By taking your distributions earlier in retirement, you're potentially reducing what your future required minimum distribution may be. The more money you're getting out of these accounts, potentially the smaller your required distribution will be. So I challenge you right now, if you're watching this and you are already taking required minimum distributions, this is a good time to be taking them because tax rates haven't been this low in 40 years. However, tax rates very well could be much higher down the road and how much they are means testing Medicare and Social Security will likely be impacted as well. Another thing to consider is by delaying your required distribution or your distribution in general, potentially means you'll leave more in pre-tax accounts to your heirs. Now, a lot of people have value to leave money to their kids. That's great if that is the case for you. But remember, under today's law, after the Secure Act 2.0 passed, your heirs are now forced to take all of that money out over 10 years. They can no longer stretch it out in the stretch IRA that, I mean, really was a gift 
from the government for many, many years, but that is no longer the case. So if you have a value to leave money to heirs, it could very well make sense to accelerate your distributions from the IRA, leave them money in brokerage accounts, money market CDs, things of that sort that have a step up in cost basis could potentially be left tax free to them. But then we get to the ultimate account, which is the Roth IRA and the Roth 401k. Under today's law, neither of those accounts have required distributions on them. And so that gives you control. It allows you to leave the money tax free to your kids as well. Like the most important thing, just the takeaway today, is that you're never gonna be forced under today's law to take that money out, which then creates that snowball effect. But the question is, is how much money should you distribute out of the IRAs in early years of retirement? Are you a candidate to defer all the way up until your required minimum distribution age? We have families that come in and see myself and my team of advisors all throughout the year. And they are concerned about increased social security taxes or increased Medicare premiums. In some cases, we show them, hey, based on your portfolio and the way things are structured, you don't have an issue with many of these things I've talked about. On the other side of that coin, many families come in and they have no idea that they're gonna be facing these increases. And so we can help them arrange the portfolio in a way that can give them greater control. So the first thing is, are you a candidate to take your distributions earlier in retirement or later? The second is how much money should you convert to Roth IRAs? Very few people in this country need to convert everything to Roth. If your waking value is to leave as much money to your heirs as possible, then that may put emphasis on how much you should convert. But remember, the reason we want to convert the money to IRA is that it reduces your future required distribution. So there is a sweet spot for many people as to how much you should convert over your lifetime, how many years should that conversion take place. And a lot of times you wanna get the heavy lifting of that conversion done before you turn your required distribution age 73, 75. So if you're 61, 62, retiring, and you're watching this right now, you know, we've got a long runway, a decade plus, that we can get things converted. So the more time you have, the smaller the price of admission to get in the Roth. But the thing is, is when should you begin converting? And how much do you need to convert to hit that sweet spot so that you're in control of your taxes in retirement? This is what we do day in and day out in our office at Reap Financial. And we can run a 60 minute tax savings analysis for you as well. We can do this virtually or in one of our offices here in Central Texas. And in 60 minutes, you'll identify if you're a candidate to take Social Security early, if you are a candidate to distribute your IRA sooner than later, and we can identify how much you're going to pay in Medicare premiums over your retirement years and ways to fix that, ways to reduce that. And most importantly, we can identify how much you need to convert to Roth IRA. I encourage you to take advantage of a 60 minute tax savings analysis with my team of fiduciary advisors. Email me right now, retire at reapfinancial.com. That's retire at reapfinancial.com and my team will reach out to schedule your 60 minute tax savings analysis. Be sure and hit the subscribe button down below. I drop new content on this channel every Wednesday. Until then, all the best.